we have here on today's show is Scalar driving a small little virtual band. We've got a, a drummer, we've got an easy uh, bass, uh, bass player, we've got Noir for piano, and we've got uh, the Ample uh, Taylor guitar. So that's our little virtual band. And we're going to have a little fun on how we're going to drive it with different performances, but uh, even more importantly, how we're going to take those initial performances and then make them more interesting and realistic on every track. All right, so all these tracks, the bass, the piano, and the guitar, all have their corresponding scalar tracks. So the scalar track uh, for the bass is set up for the bass and will control the bass, the piano, will control the piano and the guitar, the guitar. And for the bass, the input for the bass is set to the scalar, which is named bass. So scalar bass, named appropriately, scalar piano, name it right, and scalar guitar. And uh, it'll be easier when you want to select what input for these actual tracks. So the bass gets scalar bass, and the piano gets scalar piano, and you get the idea there. So having that uh, been set up, then we're going to have all these different scalers and we can control them separately, or we can have them all sync up together. Um, let's see, let's right click, sync, and now we have the entire state. But right now I don't even have to sync them up because there may be uh, some changes on every one of these tracks separately. But you do have that option with one button here to do that. All right, so now that we have these tracks set up, let's um, solo the guitar track, and then uh, let's talk about what's going on in each separate track. So now if we listen to the first track being soloed, we can hear the Apple Taylor guitar, and the Taylor guitar has no, it's not being driven by anything internally at all. It's simply acting right now as a virtual instrument and it's being driven by uh, the scalers little performance here, which is an arpeggio, an eighth note arpeggio with an up down repeat. And um, I have voice grouping on, you can turn that off and on and you can experiment with that, but um, that's something you can turn on or off. It doesn't really matter at this point. So if we keep soloing it, and I, if you notice here, I turned it from the piano keyboard to a guitar just so you can see it more like as a fret representation of a fretboard here. But we have a nice little arpeggio going with the guitar. Nothing complex at all. Very, very simple. But when you add it into the other tracks, it, uh, you know, it becomes more and more interesting. But that's exactly what we, going, we have going on right now for this track. Uh, the default guitar... Um, set to finger library, um, simply driven by that eighth arpeggio. All right, then let's take a look at the piano track. So we'll solo, solo the piano track. And if we bring it up here, it's kind of my standard noir piano. And it also has nothing else driving it. It's just acting as a virtual instrument. And that's being played by an even simpler arpeggio of quarter note arpeggio just going up, just as a starting point. But all these tracks are playing the same chord progression, which we simply drag down from 70s funk and solo number one. So all the bass, the piano, and uh, the guitar are all being uh, playing 70s funk solo number one. So that's just to give you an idea of how we're starting here. So that's the piano track. And if we go to the bass track next and solo that, I'm bringing this up to the front, we have an easy bass. And again, that is simply set up right now. It will change, but right now it's set up just to be played as a virtual instrument. I have picked what type of guitar I want, a deep, a bright pick type guitar and you can change some of these settings, but basically it's just a bass that uh, is set up to be played by Scaler's um, little uh, performance here. So for the bass, 
Scalar is using one of the first, uh, the new common straight number one as just a basic bass. All right, so that's what we have for the bass. That will change though. Um, we're going to add some spice and dice to uh, these tracks to make them a little more interesting. Now, just to go over what's on the drum track, we've got, if we solo that here, a uh, superior drummer, which is just set to a, right now it's a kit, uh, because we're using for chords, I thought just, you know, grab a, a kit. And for grooves, something he just pulled in like the third one here. Not even really paying attention to much, but just just to get some grooves going for our initial tracks. All right, so that's what we have on each track, and that's what we're dealing with as a starting point. All right, so let's see what we can now do with just our bass track, how we can make it interesting and take it along a different path. So we are using the bass straight number one uh, performance under common, right? So um, let's switch that immediately to something funky. Since our, our um, drums are a bit funky, let's go to funky one. We've got it soloed here. Right, so now we got a uh, lot funkier bass and again we could go in so many different directions but let's uh, take a twist here and let's now say well why can't we just uh, drag it right into easy bass and use all of easy bass's editing tools and realistic tools in here so let's do exactly that let's take funk one grab those chords and simply drag them right into easy bass. Now the performance which is down here in the MIDI notes and if we go to the grid editor we can see the performance. That is funk one straight out of uh, Scalar and these are the chords out of Scalar right over here and they're separated in easy bass that gives you a lot more opportunities to do edits on, in separate ways here. So you could edit the chords separately from the MIDI notes and it's very versatile this way. So let's go back to the beginning and we can for now turn off Scalar completely, the Scalar bass track. So that's off. We shut that off and move it out of the way for now. And uh, we may want to drag this out a little bit, see all our notes. And uh, so we get a good picture of what we're dealing with. Go back to the beginning. Now this should sound just like it sounded inside of Scalar when Scalar was playing it. And it does. So we literally taken the musical idea out of Scalar and brought it in with one drag into here. But now we have so much more to work with as far as this one musical idea. So when it comes in, there's three parts. Uh, the entire part where you can drag it around and move it as one part and rename it as a verse, chorus, or whatever. Or you can manipulate and control and edit the chords separately. And, but what we want to do right now is those notes. So we're going to edit the notes so we highlight this part of it. And when you do that, the edit play style becomes active. And now we can edit the notes with these controls down here all at one time. So all the notes are going to get edited with these dials. So if we want to make the notes longer, more, um, if you want the notes to become, let's say, I'm not sure why that's, it should be, there they are. Okay, uh, because they were long notes to start with, so I couldn't make them much longer for them to fit within the grid. So I have to actually make them shorter. There wasn't much room left in the grid for the size of the notes to make them longer and more sustain-like. But if I back it off, I can make them more staccato or more rhythmic-like, right? So let's play it and hear the differences. Great. 
So we can also open the strings and which will make them less, the strings won't be as buzzy and won't ring out as much. So. Add some velocity to compensate for those strings. Pounding on the strings. Let's back off of that. And we'll control click to bring that back to where it was. Another thing you can do while you're in the edit play style, you can add transitions all at in one go. So you could, you know, create all these different transitions in one go. So if you want to play differently. That may or may not be what you want because that way you don't have much control. All the notes are changing, but imagine if, let's just try it. If you grab a selection here, will it just, no, it does all the notes. So you're somewhat limited, but you can get a different style with all your notes with one click by doing it uh, that way. But let's not uh, use that for now. Let's just go back to what we had. So now that we've done maybe a few quick edits using the play style over the entire notes, we may have added a little bit of velocity, may have done a little bit just to get the feel we want, and the length may have changed a bit. But now here where it gets a lot more interesting. We could change one of these chords just on our bass line. So we could double click and we get the circle of fifths here, which you know gives you so many options as far as changing one chord um, in this line, this bass line. But uh, so that's available. But uh, more importantly, on the edit screen, we now have the ability to grab any notes and work on those in very specific ways. So um, we could say that, well, the bass player, if you start thinking like a bass player, he's going to add accents and he's going to make some fancy transitions. So the first thing we want to do to spice this up would be, well, let's try some transitions then. What if we grab this note and this note? Could we get a nice fancy bend or slide up in there? And we should be able to do it uh, with this button here. This is your slides in the notes, articulations here, and um, you have options for uh, adding vibrato and pitch bend and length all separately, muting notes. So right, right away, let's add two bands here, then let's listen to them, or a slide, two slides. And you can adjust the slide. So once the slide is made, you can just select it and you could bend the slide in or out to give you a slightly different slide there. So you just select, click on that line and bend it in or out to give you a little variation there in how it slides. So let's move the cursor back here to the beginning. Let's play and listen. So now we have a very subtle, interesting little slides here that kind of subconsciously are saying that, wow, this bass player is, he's using accents and slides and it's sounding, it's beginning to sound more realistic. So let's add a few more of those. We don't want to overdo it, but uh, let's just go with some quick uh, things we can do here. And um, let's say that uh, these two will slide together. You could try different things. I don't think that will work. You have to spend the time to really get to know how this works, but let's do simple slides. And uh, as a slide this one in we'll do a little overboard for the sake of example so and we'll bend this a little bit and um, but of course you can do more so if we go back to the beginning we could also say that these two notes we want a more interesting uh, 
transfer between those two notes there. So um, we could do something, change the hammer or legato. If we just click over it, you get a little help thing that tells you what's going on there. Now let's just see what that sounds like. So little variations, right? That lane, that uh, bit of MIDI there is playing the same type of thing, but it's interpreted two different ways now because of the transitions and the different articulations. So let's do some more with articulations and specifically let's take these notes and let's say that we want these just to be maybe um, ghost notes or slap popped. So if we go back now we... And if you wanted to do some more kind of rhythmic things, you could, you know, go back, make the lengths uh, shorter. So if you want it to be more staccato, rhythmic, maybe funky, uh, really tight to the beat, make them shorter, uh, grab a bunch of notes and maybe change their articulations. And get a, you know, a really different kind of feel going depending on your music. So. Maybe you just want those as ghost notes. So if you click on it, you hear the effect. That's the full note. Now they're just kind of ghosted notes, so kind of choppy. So now your bass player's he's way more in the pocket and kind of missing a few notes, just ghosting them. And you can see now the rhythm and the style of the play is a lot more funkier, tighter to the beat. And just as quickly, though, you could do the opposite and make it more uh, sustained notes. Take out these and put in legato, more legato transitions. Maybe take out some velocity, maybe come up a little more. And you get a whole different feel. But the fun's just starting because as we've been editing these notes and you have the control over each note, and there's a lot more here, I mean... Obviously, you could spend hours explaining all this, and there's a lot to be learned in there. But um, another thing you could do really quick to get a different feel, and let's just back off on the notes and keep it a somewhat uh, rhythmic feel here. But if we go back to the beginning, we see that uh, these are our notes. And um, if we go to the Groove tab, these notes now, can we can get substitutes. So we can replace the MIDI but that MIDI will have different grooves played according to these chords. So the chords will not change, but the MIDI is going to change. So now let's uh, grab a uh, idea here and we can listen to it. Let's do something a little faster. Now this groove is different and it may or may not work with uh, what we want, but we can test it. We can say, Okay, replace MIDI, and now if you look at our MIDI down here, it's going to change as I highlight a bunch of different ideas. Now it's a different idea, playing our chords, right? So now I can quickly take the chords and the basic idea from Scalar, but change, change the grooves according to a bunch of different descriptions here. So, you know, immediately if we want something jazzy, straight 4-4, we could just test it out. I'll turn it up a little bit. Want a few more notes in there? that fast right want to check out a bridge or try some bridge ideas for but how about if we stick with something a little funky so let's go straight funk and there's no reason why we have to stay with that particular guitar we could change the picks and the guitar and the effects 
but say, let's just say we like it. We go to save the change. So now that new MIDI with our, and we'll turn our drums off for now. Um, so that new MIDI is with our chords now, and we can go back to the grid editor, and uh, we can now edit this MIDI, this groove, all separately, one note, just like we did. We can change if it's, if there's one or two places where it's too much of a slap, too much of a pop, or you don't like the transition, or you want to add a transition, it's as simple as grabbing the notes and changing this new uh, version here, just like we changed the last one to put in a slide here, change our articulation here, add vibrato just on certain notes for the entire note, delayed start, all kinds of vibrato, lengths, pitch bends, muting, and of course all the articulations. So instantly you can take the idea on the bass track from Scalar, change what Scalar gave us from that Funk 1 original groove, change it and tailor it to exactly how you like it, or go to the Grooves tab and use the same chords but try completely different ideas here uh, almost instantly right and then when you're happy with it and say you're working on the verse or the chorus you simply then can drag that midi that you've worked on and you can drag it onto say the intro or wherever so you can move this out of the way but you could then tailor it to be a verse or a chorus or whatever and then start to work on it inside your DAW with even more tools and your chord track, right? And so, and you can set your arranger track to, you know, you can set up an arranger track and um, with each one of these verses and bridge, you can give it a separate name, just double click on it. And then up here in the corner, you can change the name of it. So we'll be getting into that, I think a little bit later and maybe the next uh, part two of this, we'll see. But that's just the bass track. That's how, you know, we can start with all the hundreds of ideas and tempos and voice group grouping and harmonizing with all these different ideas in here and then take it two steps up by editing that or changing that completely and also fine-tuning our guitar to play that groove exactly how we want and we haven't really even got into that much or change the guitar completely depending on the VST you're using. And um, you could also do almost the same type of thing with something like U-Jams, uh, Mellow, Rowdy, or Royal. They have all have their own grooves. They don't have uh, near the capability for editing as uh, in easy uh, bass, but they still offer a lot of their own grooves and sounds. So, so that's just the bass track. Next, we're going to look at the piano track. So now let's talk about the piano track and what we can do, uh, the different ways we can move forward with the piano. Uh, right now I've got the Noir piano. I've added an Easy Keys piano, but we'll get to that in a second. But we're playing that performance, that simple uh, quarter note arpeggio. And that's a starting point, but uh, we could easily, you know, go with something different and say that, you know, let's look for a performance that might uh, be more interesting. Could see how you can take bits and pieces that might be you know really useful for the bridge or a chorus and you know more rhythmic parts and more melodic parts but uh, you can simply go through the hundreds of variations and we've talked about this before so if you're looking for something rhythmic
point is there's almost anything uh, you could want as far as another starting point in here, something rhythmic, something melodic. All right. So you could go through all these different things. You could also, you know, there's no reason why we have to stay at 4-4 four, four time and at this uh, 100 tempo. Um, you could get into some triplets. You'd have to, of course, change around your bass and the other tracks. But uh, that's another thing you could do. Well, let's just quickly go through some more of these ideas. Turn up the... Mess around with the voice grouping, human eyes. From the beginning. And you could play around this, you know, with this type of thing for a long time. But there, just like what we did with the bass, we can do some interesting things with our uh, piano chords. So we're going to do the same type of thing. Uh, since we have easy pianos or uh, easy keys, we can say, in this case, we're going to turn off perform on the piano scaler, and we're going to just use the chords keep things simple at this point. We're going to drag in easy keys and we're going to turn off the noir piano for now but uh, once we find the right groove in easy keys you could have the easy keys then play the noir piano to get a nicer piano sound using the easy keys groove. But we'll turn that off for now and we'll turn on easy keys and uh, right now if we drag in these chords, similar to easy bass, we drag it into the song section here, and it asks us if you want to transpose, uh, you know, and you can just bring it in the way you want. And here it is now inside of easy keys. And um, right now, it should sound similar, but different, because they're different samples. Now we have the easy key samples are playing with the chords from Scalar. So right now, again, we're going to turn off Scalar. We no longer need that to generate a musical idea, and we extracted the chords and brought them into easy keys. So we can turn it off for now and come back to it anytime we want new ideas. So we simply dragged it in, and if we go back to the start, it sounds the same without scalar. It's basically we imported that idea and now we can use, again, we can use all of Easy Keys ideas and uh, different uh, piano sounds or uh, grooves in here. So in a similar fashion we can edit with the circle of fifths any one of these chords and we can take a look at the MIDI which we could drag into the DAW at any time from here just like we could from scalar. But if we listen to it, it's uh, it's just the chords right now. That's all we dragged in are the chord changes. And that's good, but similar with easy bass, um, except in this case we can't go in here and change every note and articulation. Well, there's not so much articulation in piano, I'd say there's um, velocity would come into play. But we can't go in and change the notes here, but we could easily drag this into uh, our DAW and manipulate every note. But before we do that, let's, uh, let's see what else we can do quickly here. So just like the easy bass, there's a bunch of grooves in here and we can replace the MIDI, but not the chords. So let's replace these, the, just the plain chords with a more interesting, well, let's listen to it first. Bunch of variations. Different musical ideas. But let's try that. I want this kind of groove to be brought into our chords here. So we simply turn on Use Browser MIDI and it changes here. And now let's play that. If we go back to the beginning, we'll get a 
better idea of climbing. We can change just like an easy bass on the fly, different ideas. Go through hundreds of different piano ideas, all based on our chords, in sync with our uh, the DA. So say I like that kind of idea, and we can stop this, and we can say, okay, push push this button now, replace. So now that MIDI has been replaced. And if we double click on it, we can have an option. Say if that we want that to play an octave higher, really high, we can just quickly do that. Or lower. That doesn't sound good. Let's go with I think it's good where it's at. So now we've done the same thing that we've done with our bass, but we've done it with easy keys which then we can route to uh, play the noir piano. But we can do exactly the same thing. We can drag this into our easy keys and we can take that MIDI and we can turn it into the bridge, the verse or whatever. And since uh, easy keys has a lot of different versions, it does have courses and verses and fills and things in here. So you could easily replace the chord MIDI for a bridge or an ending, or um, a lot of these songs have intros, right? So variation, like here's an intro, and you have three different, four different versions of intros for this type of song. So you could use this for the intro. You just drag it into the intro uh, part of your song. And now you have an intro that is going to be using your chords from the scalar track, right? on piano, piano scalar track, and it's an intro done by a piano player that now has brought that MIDI. And so there you have your piano intro for your track. Now, in the next segment, we're going to see how we can also do this for our, um, our acoustic guitar. So now for the final track, the uh, acoustic guitar track, let's also try to do the same thing where we can start with a basic idea. And I've switched things around a little bit. I've got a nice classical um, progression going here. And I've got switched from the keyboard to the guitar fret. And we can play through all kinds of musical ideas here. Experiment. Again, limitless, uh, limitless ideas and change our articulations. Could go into all the special effects. Uh, again, just really any direction you want to go. But let's just listen to some of these beautiful new performances and. different directions you could go.
So let's say for just for instance we like this and that's the direction we want to go. Again, we grab these new chords and we switch over to the editor or what's called riffer inside the ample system. And um, I already deleted out, so just clear all. Use this button here with this switch, and that will clear out the editor. And you can just drag in this musical idea for the guitar straight into Ample. And now Ample will play it just like uh, the Easy Bass and uh, the piano uh, thing we did. So I'm turning off Scalar completely on the guitar track. And now we just listen to this and it'll be slower because uh, for some reason it's bringing in at half tempo. Uh, I don't know if I have a, a setting uh, correct or if it's just a glitch at this point. But um, let's play it. So that's exact half tempo of what we first uh, created it with. So let's, I'm beginning to think there's a bug here. Hope this doesn't crash because you should be able to change the tempo right there. Oh, sorry, I have to change that. So let's go to 200. And now it should be playing at the tempo. All right, so there we have our performance. And really quite easy. Um, you just drag it in like all the others. And this performance can be dragged into um, its track here and uh, not only do you, you get the notes up here but you get all the program changing down here so you don't necessarily want to change these notes these aren't uh, musical notes these are key switches and program changes for articulations and whatnot the notes you would want to um, and actually edit the mouse scroll wheel on my mouse is acting up but uh, these are the notes up here that you would actually want to edit. And uh, of course, you can use the chord track. So since we know what you know scale and chord it's in, um, and you can edit any part of that to be any chord or scale or key. And so you, know, you could uh, select all and then just switch it to a different scale or key. And um, all these notes you can add in strums, different types of sustains. And just like with Easy Bass, um, you have all the articulations, bend options, different types of vibrato, and um, all, all the things that you would want. Plus, the there's a line here for strums. So you can program in your, the strumming as you like it. So if you draw in a strum, you can see how it, this all becomes a strum. And then you can simply grab those notes and make the strum as long as you want. And you can also add in, if we, on this FX line here, if you can see it, it's very small here, but it's, there's a line for FX editing. And when you add in special effects, and there's a bunch of them here, so hits, pops, downstrokes, upstrokes, slaps, and scratches, you can add in your special effects exactly where you want them. And then again, you just drag it into your DAW when you want to finish it off. So it's pretty much the same thing as the um, Easy Bass and the piano situation where you start with all kinds of musical ideas, quickly go through them, but then when you're ready, drag that idea with the chords into your VST instrument, fine tune it, make it more realistic, add in the pops, the scratches, the transitions, the slides, all the very realistic things, maybe change some articulations, um, some palm mutes, and then just simply drag it into the appropriate uh, place for your, your song. So, yeah, you know, if this was to be a verse, then you just drag it into your cue bass section and maybe cut it up to be, you know, what part of it do you want for your verse? Do you want to just slice it over here? and use that MIDI for the verse. So, and then you can get rid of that part. And again, just endless what you want to do. And then you may take a different part of it and make a bridge or an ending, or simply go back to the root of where it started, which would be on the guitar track. And you could, 
you know, very easily just shift it to be um, for a bridge, you might even just go two times. So a speeded up version of that same performance, or you may just switch to a different performance and slow it down. Uh, so many different options. You may even do a modulation where you're changing the chords uh, for your your verse and your chorus. So you 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 know you have these scales here, but you could go to modulation and say okay. Or uh, in this case, you would go to I think it's modal interchange, uh, secondary scale. Okay, yeah. So you could say now I want to modulate away from the E major. And I want to modulate to uh, D, uh, anything, minor, right? So now you have your suggested modulation pathway. And I think this, again, deserves its own video. But you have your suggested pathway to this new uh, scale. And David's talked about it. And um, so people are realizing that they can uh, modulate and have tools to help them go from the verse in one key to the chorus to modulate a pathway to a new scale down here. So all these tools are, you know, really help you do what you need to uh, get done for your song. So this is kind of a, you know, a video where we just show how you could get your band going. You could have every band member on its own scalar track and so easily, you know, drive each one in a similar way or totally change each one and edit right inside the instrument itself, adding so much more realism. So that's it for today's video. A uh, bit of a fun video. Hope you had time to create some music today and we shall see you on the next video.